Okay, what I wanted to do was cover a topic that many people ask me about, and I've had this on my to-do list for a really long time, and finally I'm getting to do this. I've got the time today to pull this together with Gary's help behind the scenes. So, hello everyone, my name is Sonia Showalter. Today, I'm going to show you my typical way of hooping fabric and stabilizing it. So, <clears throat> some of you are familiar with my tips on starching and pressing your fabric until it's nice and stiff. And I've got a um, napkin here that is actually a flower sap napkin, uh, flower sap, no, flower sack napkin. I get these from, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I've got, <clears throat> I, I'm taking care of bunnies for my granddaughter and I think the hay is literally giving me hay fever. So I'm sorry I have to clear my throat every so often today. Um, okay, back to this napkin. This comes from uh, Cotton Creations and they sell uh, American-made uh, flower sack towels. Now this is the premium weight, which is not like a gauzy weave. It's more solid and, and it's still uh, nice and thin like a regular uh, um, flower sack towel, but it's nice. It's a nice tight weave, so it's beautiful to embroider on. This is a 20 by 20 inch napkin that they carry, and I think it only it's the only one they carry. It's a it's the premium weight. Uh, in case you're interested in getting these. I, I use these a lot because I just, I really love the cotton. And um, uh, it's just, they're the handy. I've ordered these by the dozens and I, I've got them handy for um, pictures and all. Although I do, my preference is to stitch on linen. So when I'm testing, I don't always use my good linen. I'll use a cotton fabric. And uh, because I have so many of these, I use the flower sack um, towels and napkins. So I, I'm answering that question because I know a lot of you will ask that. Okay, so the first thing I do to this, and you can tell, I've ironed, hopefully you can tell on the video, I've ironed a part of the napkin for, as my first step in stabilizing. So I don't iron the whole thing with starch. I just iron the area that's going to be hooped. So not just the, the small area the design is going on, but the entire area that's going to go into the edges of the hoop. And um, I do maybe three times. I actually spray this enough that it feels wet. And if you, um, uh, I've started to, to um, pre-spray my um, items, if I have time, if I think ahead, um, far enough ahead, I will spray them first and let them dry. And then when I come back, to, uh, for example, this one I sprayed this morning, but I had to use a, a pressing cloth, and I actually used another of these towels as a pressing cloth because it's so wet, I don't want to plant my hot iron on top of that. So I'll use a, another layer until this finally becomes more like damp instead of wet. And then I can remove the um, pressing cloth and iron with the straight iron onto my uh, piece. So, but this corner has been pre-sprayed, so it's nice and stiff and it's not pressed, only sprayed. And I have several of these because I was uh, doing a lot of embroidery on the corners. But I grabbed this one because um, I thought you might as well see it. I've sprayed this entire corner right here. I, I've got several of them with the same th treatment. And uh, now that they're dry, all I have to do is when I'm ready to uh, uh, embroider it and ready to press it actually, I'll take it to the ironing board and um, I can spray it uh, a little more starch on it if I want to, but normally what I do is um, mist it with uh, just a regular uh, water bottle, spray bottle uh, and water and not soak it, just mist it so that I can get these wrinkles out with the hot iron and because there's already starch in it, it'll be ready to go. And if you feel like it needs a little more, then at that point you can spray a little more starch on it, but you don't have to soak it 
after it's dry like this. So that's kind of a pre-prep uh, step that can help if you're wanting to do a, several projects and you don't want to stand there drying a piece of uh, cotton that you've soaked with starch. So it just saves a lot of time to do that. So um, so here's one. Uh, this, this side has been pressed nice and smooth and um, that's why it's bubbly because this is still crinkly from the natural state of the fabric. And so um, this one, I just I like to press it until it's just really smooth. Uh, and you can do that with these flower sack. Um, uh, so what I do is, now that it's ready, it's nice and stiff, and that's the first step in stabilization, stabilization, because I like to put my, pull my fabric nice and taut in the hoop, and this helps to keep that weave from getting distorted, as opposed to a piece of fabric that hasn't been uh, treated this way. The weave is very loose, and, and it's, it's just almost too fluid for you to start stretching it in the hoop. And you're not actually stretching it, you're just pulling up all that slack once you hoop it. So I'll show you in just a second. So first things first, after it's ready, it's press, uh, pressed and nice and stiff and smooth, it's ready for, I, I need to know where to place my hoop. So what I normally do, since this, let's say I'm gonna embroider this as a napkin and I wanna embroider the ed, near the edge, I'll determine how far from the edge I want my design. And if you're unsure, you can always print your design to true size and then just cut it out and place it here and see you know, whereabouts you want it to be. Find where the center of the design is because it should print with the center uh, points. And, um, and then just mark that as your center. Okay, so here's what you can do. Once you decide where the design is going, what I normally do is fold my napkin, and because these in particular are not squared, I just find a happy medium, but the bottom of the napkin, the, the hem, uh, the two sides should match up. That way your design will, fill, will land straight, parallel to that edge. So over here, you just find a happy medium, because it's... If I try to meet this, these two edges, then the bottom will be crooked. So you want to go with the bottom edge. And then find a happy medium for the parts that are probably going to be folded under. And then I just put a crease, finger crease, right down the middle. And then when with your printed design, you can place it here to see how far from the edge you want it to hoop. And you want to make sure it's going to be fit in your hoop. If it's going to be too close to the edge, you'll have to do a different uh, process. I cover that in my directions, but that's another video. We're just doing the ones that can be hooped today, just to stay on topic. All right, so I'm going to pretend I know exactly where the center of my design is going to be. I'm going to use this, this um, folded line as my guide for this way. Now, I have to be honest, most of the time I'm just eyeballing it, so I'll slide my hoops together based on this one line. And I've got the center, even though my hoops are wrapped, that's another video, and find that in our educational videos on SoniaShowalterDesigns.com on how to wrap your hoops. Um, but I marked, I transferred my center marks for the north and south on my hoop, and um, so I'll place those on that folded uh, uh, mark on my napkin. And I'm eyeballing it how far I want it from the edge. <clears throat> and then I can just hoop it this way. Now, if you want to be very precise, if you're doing six of these and they need to be identical, then what you can do is, once you know how far from the edge uh, the center is going to be, what, you know, you placed your printed paper here, or you just happen to know. You want it three inches, the center to be three inches from the bottom edge, let's say. Um, you measure to three inches or four inches, uh, whatever it is, and you put a fold there. Okay? 
So now you have <coughs> north and south, east and west marked. Okay? And hopefully you can see that in the video. So I've got a cross right here. So now I slide the outer hoop. In this case, this is a multi-needle machine and the, the inner hoop has the handles on it. If you have the single needles, it's probably the, uh, the outer hoop that has the handle. But just know that the inner hoop is what's going to guide you as to where those lines, those folds will go. So I've got my north and south lines marked here, centers, and my center on my east and west are marked, okay, because I transferred it to my wrappings. Otherwise, I'd be kind of lost. So you need to know where those marks are. You put the, the marks on the folds, and I won't be able to show you that on, as I'm doing this on the table, but um, once Gary gets done editing this video, there will be close-ups of what's happening right here, and hopefully you'll be able to see that too uh, on those close-ups. Close-ups, but I think you understand. So my fold is going right through these marks inside my hoop. This fold, the north and south fold, and this fold is going through the east and west marks in my hoop. So that's it. You put your hoops together. And you've got your, your placement in the right place, okay? So there's the center, and you can see the folds. I can see the folds, but you would see it if you were doing the same thing. So now what I do <coughs> is this is too, it sags. It's a little too loose. Once those um, stitches start to form and pull and tug, and like they do, if the fabric is too loose, it's not going to register perfectly as it stitches. And the bigger the design, the more that will make a difference in the quality of the finish of your design. So, what I do is I pull all of this slack that's in the fabric right now. I don't tighten my hoop. I make sure the hoop fits perfectly for this particular fabric. If I was to hoop this, hoop my hoops together, and it feels like, oh, that went together way too easily, then I'm going to tighten that hoop that tighten that outer hoop until it's nice and snug, finger tight, no screwdrivers or anything because that will damage your hoop. Just finger tight until you can't turn it anymore and um, uh, take it apart and start over as far as putting the hoops back together and hooping my fabric. So now what I do is I go ahead and go all the way around my hoop very slowly, not slowly, but very gently but firmly pulling that slack, and you can see the slack uh, get pulled into the um, edges of the hoop, into, you know, into that sandwich right there. And you just go all the way around. You don't want to pull all the slack in one direction. You just want to go all the way around, and you see the fabric move, not very much, a few hairs. You keep going all the way around. This won't take you long at all once you start getting used to the process. This is so fast. You just pull, pull, you can see it move. But the weave is staying together because it's been pressed and starched, uh, or starched and pressed, and so it holds itself firmly in that, sh you know, in that nice tight weave. That starching and pressing makes a huge difference because with just unprepared fabric, you don't know if you're pulling too much. It's just, it doesn't, it'll just let you, let it go as far as you want to pull it. And the fabric, the weave will start getting distorted and you don't, and you have to eyeball it to see, you know, oh, I pulled too much over here. Now I've got to pull it this way. It's just, it doesn't help you at all. But if you starch and press, starch and press, starch and press, that will be infinitely helpful when this, when it comes time to pull the slack out of the um, hooped fabric. All right, so once it's done, you've gone all the way around, and I turn it over because 
it's easier to pull the fabric with your thumbs like this and forefingers and push against the hoop like this at the same time than to try and do it this way and try to hold that inner hoop in place with your the rest of your hand and, and it's just it's really much more difficult to do that it's much much easier to turn it over and just do this because naturally you're going to brace your fingers against the hoop to pull the fabric and it just works so much nicer so once you once you've gone all the way around it should feel hard i usually use this finger it's just it's a little more sensitive to what i'm looking for than using my other fingers it's just just try that and then you can feel it just feels hard it like uh, like a drum uh, you know if i push hard enough it won't be as tight as a drum but it feels like a drum when i use this and i push gently okay and especially the corners because you can go all the way around and miss the corners and the corners will be a little loose so the whole point is you want that fabric to stay exactly in that position until the stitching is finished you don't want anything any part of that fabric to shift while it's being stitched so you want to give it you know um, set it up for success because loose fabric does not stitch very well and that is how i hoop for projects that can be hooped now let's see the other thing i want to talk to you about is um Gary, can you do me a favor, please? I forgot to bring a piece of tearaway stabilizer. There should be some on the uh, cutting table. So the next thing I do is I take this to the machine and I, I uh, slide it in place. So. So, let's just pretend I've attached this to the, my machine. Now, we don't want to do this. Attach it to the machine and just, you know. You need to be careful to keep everything clear from under the hoop. So, you take it to the bed of the machine and you always want to be mindful of where that fabric is going. You attach it to the machine. Okay. Everything's out of the way or put it this way and this you know whichever direction just make sure you haven't pinched a part of your project underneath your hoop it's just a little side tip on um, preventing um, painful mistakes okay so this is on the machine and I'm ready to start the machine but I haven't attached I haven't done anything with stabilizer yet this is what I do. Okay, so you just gently lift this up. It'll, it'll lift just a little. Slide your stabilizer underneath, and you wanna make sure it goes all the way under. If you can't see it, you can, I mean, you can see through the fabric if it's white, but if you can't see it, then just turn it a different direction and slide it under in that direction so you know where all the edges are, okay? So, and you'll get the hang of this in, in no time. You'll be doing this. You slide it under. Make sure it's nice and flat. And I cut my stabilizer just a little bit bigger than the sewing field. And if you're more comfortable, you can cut it a little wider. Just so you can see the edges to make sure you're, you're actually inside that sewing field and beyond it a little bit. So, and that's all I do. I slide it under my hoop, or you can attach it, tape it. I don't do that. You could, if you felt more comfortable, attach it like this. Put a little piece of tape on each side, um, and then put your hoop on the machine. So, all you have to do then is start the machine, and it's stabilized. I never hoop, tear away, this is what this is, and this is what I use when I, when I stitch like this. Woven fabric um, that can be hooped, this is the way I do it every time. Um, 
like I said, if I can't hoop it, there's another uh, uh, method for that. And uh, you can read about it in my directions because I do talk about that. But I will make a video about that eventually. Um, if I haven't already, I think I've covered it in some of my other topics. But um, specifically for that, I would do I will do a separate video. But what I wanted to say is I do not hoop tear away to float fabric, which is the other topic. Uh, the only time I use tear away is when I can slide it under my hoop to stabilize something that's been hooped. That is my secret to stabilizing these types of uh, projects, napkins, anything cotton. Here's the finished, one of my finished projects on one of these uh, napkins from Cotton Creations. And um, I stitched that a little closer to the edge. So all I did was hoop um, as close to the edge as I could, scoop my design to the, to the bottom of the hoop. I do not like to float. That is just... Um, floating is not... Uh, okay, my rule of thumb is if you can hoop it, hoop it. Do not float items because when you float things, you're making life harder for yourself, but also it, it just gives you more opportunities to, to um, undermine the design and, and the um, registration, and, and especially if you're float and floating by floating, who, whoever doesn't understand floating, that's, that's a term used to um, describe hooping your stabilizer and then sticking your project down on top of it. Not hooping your project, but only the stabilizer. And then you stick your project down on top of that. That's like a million more steps than you need to do if you can hoop your project. Um, and then you have to baste it to the stabilizer, otherwise then you're going to get uh, you know, your project can shift, it can pucker, it, it, it won't stay in place like it needs to. That's what the whole point of hooping is. Instead of creating a vehicle to stick your project down on, it's better to hoop your project if you can hoop it. And if you don't get anything out of this video but one thing, then let it be that. Hoop your project if it can be hooped. If it's not going to damage, you know, you can't hoop leather because that'll damage it. Uh, there's certain things, velvet, things like that do need to be done a different way. So, but if you can hoop it, there's no reason not to. Um, so I hope, I hope this will be very helpful. I, I hope I haven't missed anything. I think those were the important points on actual hooping and... And that is my technique that I use every day, all day, when I'm embroidering this kind of thing. So, um, um, I think that about covers it. So, I hope that uh, you will try this. I think it'll change the way you, you, um, you see your finished embroidery. It's just a beautiful finish in the end when you're able to, when you can look at your finished embroidery and not a single pucker in your project. Not a single pucker. And it just, it just makes you smile when your embroidery comes out, embroidery comes out that beautifully. Well, we hope to see you soon. We'll try and have more videos very soon. And um, we thank you for joining us and for your patience waiting around for this video. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you again very soon.